good Wednesday evening to you, ready to talk some uh, weather as we head through midweek. We have a lot to talk about in the uh, next seven days, and at the end of the video, we'll talk a little bit about uh, some more of the things that we're looking at for the winter forecast this year. But let's focus first on the past, yeah, specifically this date back in 1988, because, of course, all the buzz in the weather world right now is, hey, we're probably going to see a few snowflakes next week, but it was on this date in 1988, we had measurable snow, in fact, almost an inch worth of snow at the Youngstown Warren Airport, 0 .0, or 0 0.9, I should say, uh, officially, on today's date in 1988. I showed you this graphic last evening in case you missed it. Uh, is snow in the middle of October crazy unusual? No, but it's certainly ahead of schedule. Our 30-year average date of the first measurable snowfall, in other words, more than a trace, more than just flurries. Uh, November the 5th, that's the 30-year average. But over the last 10 years, we've had a few dates in October, including a pretty early one back in 2015, October 17th, and then a real late one uh, back in 2012. It took until almost Thanksgiving time, really, November the 24th. And back in 1995, waited until December 11th before we had measurable snow. Well, it's not snow, but it's rain that's heading our way in the near term. Severe weather, an ongoing concern across parts of Tennessee where there's a small severe thunderstorm watch still out. There's been occasional flashes of lightning down towards Parkersburg, Marietta, heading over towards uh, Charleston as well. As this uh, cluster of showers moves north, I can't rule out a clap of thunder here locally. Most of the time, though, it is just innocuous rain showers. Now, as we head through the night tonight, these showers will come and go. Outside chance of thunder and also uh, a gusty wind could accompany uh, a couple of the more ambitious showers as we uh, go through the night. For most of us, this will occur while we're sleeping. For the highest impacts, for people heading out the door tomorrow, uh, the biggest concern would be, hey, is it going to rain all day, of course? And the answer is no. In fact, uh, the showers will end from west to east fairly early in the day, between 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. on average. Uh, we'll see those showers tapering off, and then it looks like a mostly dry period for the rest of the uh, day. Pretty good drink of water. I've been showing you the uh, model uh, rainfall totals or, or predictions over the last couple of evenings and we've had some model variations certainly but uh, the most recent runs uh, of our modeling suggest that an inch is attainable a lot of us will probably see three quarters of an inch to maybe an inch worth of rain this evening's uh, run of the graph is not quite as crazy as last evening when it was showing like two inches way up there but it's still showing a beefy inch and a half that's still an outlier most of our modeling is closer to three quarters of an inch or an inch and for most of the area, this would be, by far away, the biggest rain event so far in the month of October. Now, in, in our southeastern areas, we had some remnant moisture from the tropical system at the very beginning of the month, um, but a lot of us missed out on that, of course, and very paltry amounts around and north of I-80 so far in October. These are some uh, rain gauges. Uh, Kokoros, the URL down at the bottom, if you want to become a... Uh, a weather observer that reports your rain and snow totals on a daily basis reports them uh, online. It really serves the entire winter other weather enterprise, and occasionally you'll see me post these actual totals on TV as well. Um, so we encourage more and more people to do this. Uh, a, 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 a certified rain gauge, the real deal, uh, is pretty cheap. It's not that uh, expensive. You can get it on Amazon and many other places. Uh, it's a nice little investment, nice little gizmo to have, and. You can report those totals daily. It really helps us out. And as you can see, by just looking at the actual rain gauge numbers here, we have a big variation so far in the October totals uh, from almost two inches down towards East Liverpool to barely a couple of hundredths once you're north of Interstate 80. All right, showers taper off first thing in the morning. Sun tries to come out for the rest of our Thursday. There might be a sprinkle or a shower midday afternoon. A lot of the time rain free, but a sprinkle or a shower is gonna be a possibility. Then the sky will clear tomorrow night and a crisp but pleasant day coming up for our Friday. We'll be dry for high school football Friday evening. This next front tries to drop in on Saturday. Maybe there's a shower with this, particularly later in the day. Our current run of our model here kind of suggests that a shower could occur in the morning. I, I think this is pretty aggressive. I think if we, if we get a stray shower, it's later in the day Saturday and into early Saturday night. Now, of course, next week is going to be chilly, um, real chilly, a pretty significant early season cold snap with temperatures no higher than the mid-40s Tuesday and Wednesday and uh, a breeze making for wind chills in the 30s. But as we look ahead to the longer range, I'm seeing increased uh, confidence in the longer range modeling that the end of the month will not be all that chilly. In fact, it could be warmer than the average. So this is the 8 to 14 day outlook from the Climate Prediction Center today. Uh, showing from October 20th to 26th, this should be a pretty warm week across the middle of the country. And towards the end of this outlook, right around 
the 24th to Halloween, a lot of this warmth will try to get the green light to come east. So uh, the, the kind of weather we're going to have for a couple of days next week, I don't think we'll see it all that often again for the rest of October. All right, uh, in case you missed our uh, announcement here on Weather Geeks last week, the annual winter forecast uh, will come out Thursday, November the 17th, so a little more than a month away. Uh, just like in years past, we'll do a, a short to the point version on TV because that's all we have time for on TV. But in the online version, much like Weather for Weather Geeks, um, we'll get into lots and lots of detail, a lot of the why behind what the forecast is. And one of the things I'll be looking at over the next month, uh, water temperatures globally. Now, this is the third consecutive winter in which we have a pretty stout La Nina across the Pacific. It sticks out like a sore thumb. It's all this blue right here. This is cooler than average ocean water from the west coast of South America all the way back close to Indonesia and uh, north of New Zealand and northeast of Australia. This is a big plume of cooler than average water, pretty stout La Nina signature, but that's not the only thing we look at. La Nina is a big player in terms of driving weather patterns in the winter season, but we're going to pay attention to some of this warm water that's over the northern Pacific, which may go away by December 1st. Uh, very warm water across the Atlantic and cooler than average water all the way out here in the, <coughs> pardon me, in the uh, Eastern Indian Ocean. That's on the other side of the world. What does that have to do with our winter weather? Well, this is a, a signature that will have impacts when you have cold water over here and warmer water over here. It can have an impact on the weather patterns that start in the Indian Ocean and travel into the Pacific and then eventually travel all the way uh, into the Americas. And so, you know, we look at a lot of things, not just La Nina. So any uh, winter forecast that you may see that is based solely on La Nina is just not taking into account enough. Now, that's, again, even though I showed you a few things here in terms of water temperatures, we're looking at a lot more stuff than that. And occasionally in future editions of Weather Geeks over the next month, I'll share uh, some of the kind of behind the scenes on what I'm looking at this year and what typically goes into a, uh, a seasonal forecast. In the meantime, I'll leave you with this tonight. Have a great Wednesday night, a uh, soggy night and a soggy start to Thursday, but better things are ahead for the very end of the week. And on tomorrow's evening, tomorrow evening's edition of Weather Geeks, we'll take another look at the weekend forecast and talk a little bit more about the chances of perhaps more than just a trace worth of snow in some spots early next week. <laughs>